Hey people, so what class will be good in Wrath of the Lich King? Which class will be bad? Can I play this class in Wrath of the Lich King? What will be the best DPS in Wrath of the Lich King or tank or healer? This video is probably gonna be the most annoyed video I made so far, maybe with the exception of a video about a dungeon in the Burning Crusade that in my opinion had a particularly poor design. Anyway, I'm gonna tell you a short story to explain what this video is about. So I played all three tanks in the Burning Crusade. I played the Protection Paladin, I played the Protection Warrior, and I played the Heckin Bar Tonker. Now as you might understood or understand, I basically never had any issues getting into groups or raids because there is a chronicle high demand for tanks that is never met in terms of supply. So you can basically play any tank you want and kind of get away with it. Now I main the furry one, but I still play the other two tanks to quite a high level. High enough to start understanding their strengths and their weaknesses, and play them as good as you can play them almost. And in my experience, Protection Warrior was the most fun to play, at least rotation wise. But it was also, in my experience, the least good tank. Sometimes I was even struggling to hold threats on single target, and it's just not fun doing your best and still not really succeeding. And I mean, let's not even talk about how they perform on AoE packs. Actually, let's talk about that. I think it's literally impossible to hold threat on Apex. I mean, it's not that I think it. I, I'd go so far as to say that it is impossible to hold th threat on an AoE pack as a protection warrior. At least given the things we know now. Maybe like in five years someone will discover some weird bug. Uh, but it's just complete garbage. The protection warrior is in the garbage universe when it comes to AoE packs. Um, the paladin is the god tier. Now, I still enjoyed Protection Warrior the most, it was the most fun, despite being the least, I mean, successful. But with time, I just sort of had to accept that it realistically wouldn't work out well in the Burning Crusade. And the reason for why Protection Warriors doesn't work out is actually quite simple. Out of the four abilities that make up the Protection Warrior rotation, meaning Devastate, Revenge, Shield Slam and Heroic Strike, Zero of them scales with attack power. Imagine playing Mage and only Fire Blast scale with attack power. Or let's imagine that none of them scale with attack power. I mean spell power. That's sort of the situation you're in as a protection warrior. Because Shield Slam scales with block value, which is not a very good stat for um, well, for protection warrior. It's pretty good for protection paladins, however. Devastate scales with 50% of your average weapon damage, plus a minor static amount for each application of Sunder Armor. And realistically, in a raid environment, um, you'll have exposed armor, not Sunder Armor. Also, you're gonna want the fastest possible weapon to just dish out as many heroic strikes as possible, so Devastate hits like a wet noodle that you've like padded in cotton to make it even less dangerous. Revenge doesn't scale, period. Like, you can be completely naked with a grey weapon, or you can be completely bis-geared from Sunwell, and it's gonna do the same damage, basically. Heroic Strike itself technically does not scale with attack power, but auto attack scales with attack power. So that's that's pretty much your... like, that's if you wanna do good threats, it's all up to um, the Heroic Strike dumping. Now obviously these abilities scales with haste and crit and uh, attack armor penetration, but I mean, I think you get the point. I, I shouldn't have to point out the absolute obvious things. Ooh. So my point is that you struggle hard threat-wise with a warrior. You can't sort of make it work if you put an effort on good gear, but the same effort on a druid or a paladin would just yield way better results. And of course, the paladin also bring paladin buffs, the druid brings inner of eighth and a 5% crit buff, and if you have the chance, the combat dress. The warrior don't really have that things. It kinda has, I guess, shout, and it would have ex no, not exposed. It would have sunder, armor, but like I said, you typically use a rogue for expose, so they don't really bring much. Now, as I learned about this non-existent scaling of the protection warrior, and I saw the huge contrast in this effort result, I just accepted that I would probably have to wait to wrap the Lich King to play protection warrior and you know do it successfully. Now, as we started approaching Wrath of the Lich King, people were telling me how protection warriors were even worse in Wrath of the Lich King than they were in the Burning Crusade. And you know, in all the tier list videos and whatever, protection warriors would always be placed on the lowest tier of the rank. 
you know, if you were looking at the tank video. Now, should I care about this? Should I care about what other people think of the protection warrior? Should anyone care in a matter like this? Well, the issue here is that people invite the classes that they believe are good. And if everyone believes that something sucks, almost no one will invite it. Meaning that some classes become sort of unplayable because of the opinion about them and not because of how they actually perform. Now, in some cases, that makes perfect sense, right? Because, I mean, a boomkin in vanilla has a dreadful effort to result ratio. Now, the beta for After Liching came out not too long ago, and now we can actually test things um, to see how they are. We can test things as in other people can test things because I didn't got, get the beta. At least not of this as of this video's making. Now, anyway, if I ask people why Protection Warrior would be worse in the Wrath of the Lich King than it is in the Burning Crusade, no one would have an answer. Because people didn't know. It was just stuff that they said. And in most tier list videos, people just repeat what they've heard other people say. Maybe you remember what people were saying about Fury Warriors just prior to the Burning Crusade release. Uh, how they would be like a pretty bad spec, kind of mediocre, but Hunter, that was where it's at, right? Hunter and to some extent Warlock would be the absolute best. Those predictions were sort of accurate, but not really. I mean, Hunters are good, Warlocks are good, they're top tier, but Fury Warrior is also top tier, right? And... But people said that it was gonna be bad. But the thing is that you can't, in a way, you can't really blame people in one way, because there is really no way of knowing. Because what sort of information was actually available, I mean, what sort of information is even available now? There will likely not be any raid testing on the beta servers, so no one can really know how things will look in a raid environment in the Wrath of the Lich King. Because the information that is available right now is either 14 years old from the retail Wrath of the Lich King servers, and in those days people played the game in a very different way, um, or the information you have is based on data from private servers and there is no guarantee that the numbers on those servers are even close to the ones we'll have on a classic Wrath of the Lich King. And even if they are, people aren't necessarily valuing the same things. For example, if you're doing a speedrun in a raid, you, you need to kill trash as well as bosses. So, realistically, you're gonna value AoE and cleave quite highly Whereas perhaps on a private server, you would only care about single target DPS. And because of that, you would consider a class with, you know, pretty good single target damage, but poor AoE, you know, pretty unviable. And I think that that's the kind of treatment the rogue got. Because if they put in the effort and they get good gear, they can really get high up on the lists, right? On the damage meters. But because they don't have nearly as good cleave as a Fury Warrior, you're not gonna bring them as much. Now, recently on the beta, people have been surprised at just how hard Protection Warriors hit, right? Revenge does a massive damage, along with many other buffs to the core abilities, including actually scaling with attack power, which, you know, is pretty basic. Anyway, all of this, you know, the scaling and the increased damage and all of these things was common knowledge, or at least it was... It was available knowledge, in the sense that you could lock up abilities and the talents on the Wrath of the Lich King databases and notice what kind of buffs they were given. Now I think it's great that people are seeing this about Protection Warriors and that the, like, the general stance on them has improved, because that means that people who are gonna play this can actually get invited to groups. But I think the problem sort of remains that people still make judgments and spread conclusions about classes not based on anything except what a tier list tells them. Like, what actually makes a Protection Warrior bad in a raid? Or what actually makes the Paladin the best raid tank? Most people who make tier lists don't explain that, they just say that this is good or this is bad. Um, and I mean, it's not that tier lists couldn't work, because I think they can, but it's that people don't ask why and they don't explain why. Often people don't even know, I think. So in the end, I mean, people should play what they want to enjoy the game. But some classes are made unviable, or rather they're made unplayable because they're deemed unviable, and that makes them sort of locked out from participation in group content. And in some cases, I mean, obviously it's clear why that's the case. You don't bring a boomkin in vanilla, because that would mean that you'll have to carry the big floof of feathers around. But vanilla is a special thing, and classes are way more balanced than Wrath of the Lich King.
So I'm really curious to see what will happen with the specs that are currently considered like D tier, the worst builds. For example, Beast Mastery Hunter. Let's see what actually happens with that. And I think one major thing to consider, for example, is that people or hunters are likely gonna be melee weaving in Wrath of the Lich King, which, which they probably haven't done on private servers and probably haven't done on, uh, you know, retail Wrath of the Lich King. But anyway, if there's, if there's any message I want to convey with this video, it would be this. So whenever someone tells you that something is good or bad, you know, if, this, if they say that this class is really good or they say that that class is the worst, if they can't or won't explain why, you shouldn't listen to them whatsoever. Now, if they happen to be right, I'm sure someone else can tell you that and actually explain why that is the case. Why the, like for example, why the protection paladin is likely gonna be the best raid tank. And if it's gonna be that, it's partly gonna be, I think, because it has the highest uh, like static, mit static mitigation, like just from talents and whatever, and also that it brings uh, the paladin buffs. That is my guess. I think it's gonna do, or actually it's more than a guess, but anyway. But it's probably gonna do less damage than a protection warrior. But anyway, right. If people just say things and they don't explain why, don't listen, right? If they're right, someone else can tell you. And if they're wrong, you risk making decisions on completely made up things, right? And maybe you decide to play a class you don't really enjoy, because the thing you really want to play was said to be bad by this random streamer slash YouTuber number 147. Right, so anyway, I'm done complaining now. Please like and subscribe, make sure to hydrate, eat well, you know, all of that, and don't mix sugar into concrete plants, because apparently it'll ruin it. Now I'll be back with another video at some point, hopefully soon, and until then, see ya.